Captain. I'm I was a shark. It's <laughs> don't be alarmed. It's just me. D yeah, it's it's, ju it's just us. Whoa. You know, whoa. you're good old pals. I'm a little scared there. I know you did. There was a I shark. know you did. There was a shark on screen. I don't There's know. I I'm sorry I scared you. It's I should okay. have warned you that I was gonna scare you, but I did it. Hello! Welcome to this episode for the Love of Film 2.0. I'm your host, uh, our co-host Alicia Lucas. And I'm your co-host, Garrett Briquette. And this is another episode. So, um, you might be wondering, why am I a shark and why is Garrett a captain? Well, it's actually because... We didn't want to do a green screen bit, so we did that instead. That's not what it was. <laughs> it's because we're talking about Howl's Moving Castle, and sharks and captains have absolutely nothing to do with it. But we thought it'd be funny and cute. Howl is kind of a captain. Howl is somewhat a captain, I guess, in a way. I guess that you could consider... Calcifer um, a captain, even. Sophia, Sophie. Sophia, Sophia, a shark, Sophia. I think. Sophia. I'm pretty sure, I think. You can tell that we've really watched and, and absorbed all the characters in this film. How's her ends doing? We usually start with that, so let's start there. How okay. the Castle has an 87% on the tomato meter on RottenTomatoes.com. That's the critic score. Rotten what? No, nope, so, that's not what it is. And it has an audience score of 93%. How are you feeling about those numbers? Um, mm, audience score is audience score. It's a Ghibli movie. Everyone's going to love it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd say it's somewhere in between there, maybe. I, I was about to say, 87 seems a little low. So I'd probably say 90. 90, 90 is maybe. a solid, solid place solid to put it. Solid in between. Yeah. yeah, I think audiences rated a little too high. Critics a little too low. Yeah. The budget for this film was 2.4 billion yen. That roughly translates to 16.6 million dollars. That. You need to get that center checked out. Right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's a lot of money. I feel like for an animated film, is that a lot of money for an animated film? You tell um, me in the comment section. I think that below. is a lot of money for the animated film, but also. I think a lot of it had to do with music and yeah, it recording was Lucas, and Lucas music. And it's uh, expensive, you know, and beautiful and stunning and gorgeous. So this guy, this I mean, guy. We'll, we'll get into it, but this guy was an expensive voice actor to get facts. for the American translation. Facts, I bet, facts, facts. maybe not actually. We'll get into that. We'll get into it. It grossed domestically in Japan 190 million U.S. dollars, and Internationally, worldwide, $236 million. Released in 2004. So those are 2004 dollars. Those are 2004 yen. Those are 2004 currencies. So adjust a accordingly due to inflation, which is a, a lot. A lot. A, a lot. lot. <laughs> yeah. So um, take those numbers with a grain of salt. Up next. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, synopsis of the movie, Garrett. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what this movie is about? Encourage our watchers that haven't seen the movie to go watch it. Okay. 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 So you got Lady Sophia right here. Gorgeous, gorgeous girl. Gorgeous, gorgeous girl. Well, apparently not. She doesn't think she's very gorgeous. So she, she goes out and she's like, How only preys upon the beautiful women? And I'm not going to get preyed upon because I'm not a beautiful woman. She's a hatter. So she goes out, she almost gets attacked by these goo monsters, but luckily, our boy Hal here, well actually she almost gets uh, assaulted by two of the king's guards. Then Hal comes in, then she almost gets attacked by the goo monsters. She's going through a lot. And she's going through a lot yeah. in her life. But after that, a curse is placed upon her to make her an old, old lady. Who's the curse placed upon her by? Uh, the Witch of the Waste. The Witch of the Waste. So from then on out, we're following her, trying to get rid of her curse, while there's a war going on in the background between two factions, seems to be the witches, or the wild witches, and mm. then the king's men. Um, seems to be the two factions, and then Hal's somewhere in the middle, just blowing everything up, because he doesn't Hal care does. for either of them. 
blowing a lot of stuff up because they're blowing up like cities, they're blowing up residential areas. It's just a huge war. And it's kind of unclear. I think it's meant to be unclear. Mm. Like war is just unfavorable for everyone. Mm. And Hal's just like, I'm just gonna mess up both sides because they're both agitators. And uh, what does it matter who's blowing up what? I'm not a, you know, I'm not gonna be party to anyone blowing up anything. Uh, that's a pretty good synopsis. I feel yeah, like this yeah, yeah. this movie doesn't really have a whole lot of like through lines. I feel like. It is a little strange, as usually like Ghibli movies kind of are. They, I kind of struggle with finding a straight line plot through most Ghibli movies. I find there to be a lot of like general ideas yeah. that are talked about throughout the movies. It's not like your average movie where it's just like, introduce all the characters, introduce a problem. Talk about how to get through the problem. Yeah. Get to the fight scene, fail at the fight scene, have a little bit of moments where you're like yeah. learning about yourself, and then go back to the fight scene again, except better, and then the ending. That's how a movie in my head works as roughly as I could possibly put it. Act that's one, not exactly yeah. Act two, act three. Yeah. And that's not exactly how uh, these movies come about. And so I get a little confused, a little confuzzled every once in a while. Yeah. yeah. I would say so. Yeah. I think plot is not as important. I think Ghibli films, in my experience, the ones that I've watched, have been more like, here's a situation. Don't you want to see what happens in this situation? Mm. And then a lot of stuff happens in that situation. Mm -hmm. A lot of unexpected things happen in that situation. Conflicts mm -hmm. arise and then get dealt with. But like, you know, there's no like arc, like you're saying. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. No. And we saw a lot of that, exactly what you're saying, like tiny little circumstances that are thought or like seen, solved, and reflected on. We saw a lot of that in Only Yesterday, which was the last yes. Ghibli film that we uh, reviewed. Um, so yeah, I think that's a pretty, pretty apt description of like how this movie works. With that being said, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. You know the drill. Have we gotten any spoilers yet? Have we spoiled anything? Not really, so. no. no. Uh, so if you haven't, this is kind of a spoiler. <laughs> This is the literally the first thing you look up. Like this is the cover of the film. I just this is a spoiler for many reasons. But you don't know that they're spoilers until you're at this point. And then you're like, "Oh, now I see what's happening." Uh, I guess that's a good point. That's a good point. Fair. Yeah. Fair, 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 fair. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like a less of a spoiler, more like a foreshadowing mm. type beat. Cuz this is like one frame, and it's hard to tell what's even going on behind how which behind Hal is a spoiler, yeah, but yeah, you can't yeah. even see behind Hal, yeah. so it's really not. Well, I was talking more about, well, hold on, spoilers go away. Yeah, spoilers go away. We'll spoilers give you a second. Spoilers go away? No, spoilers, people that, spoilers are coming. Spoilers stay. People, people who, who are. <laughs> people who have seen it stay. People who want to see spoilers stay. P yeah. That was hard to get out. Don't worry about it. I'm pretty sure they're gone. You think they're gone? You. Come on. You, you know, go. Leave. Go watch the movie. Then you can come back. All right. Thank God. you. Okay, thank gone. you. All right. So, this is kind of move. <laughs> this is she's a little bit of a spoiler because she's old at the beginning of the movie. Like that's kind of like the first thing, and now she's young. Now she's young, but she's young with the old hair. Ah, good point. But she stays that way. Yeah. For presumably the rest of her life. I have no idea. Anyway, hello, non. -spo I mean, spoiler people who can watch spoilers. Just making sure that other guy Mom. wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> I know you haven't seen this one. Go watch it. <laughs> so, Her mom, um, I know y'all are together. I'm talking to you too. All right. Sorry. So, um, Garrett, what was your uh, favorite scene in this movie? What was my favorite scene in this movie? Why don't you go first? Okay, that was that was rude. Anyway, uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I actually have a favorite scene in mind, and that scene would be when Calcifer is panicking and freaking out that Sophie is just gonna let him die out. Oh. Um, and she picks up the, like the little log and he yeah. falls into the thing and, and he's just like the entire time that he's just whining and crying about it I'm just like yeah. <laughs> Mike Wazowski crying <laughs> Mike Wazowski. Oh, we didn't talk about the actress in this movie. Well, we haven't yet But we'll okay, get okay, to we'll it. Get to it. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. That's probably one of my favorite scenes Every time Sophie and Calcifer interact. I find it to be very entertaining. So. I do like Calcifer a lot I, Yeah, I think my favorite scene is when uh, Like the head witch I forget her name starts an S the head witch Solomon? is... Solomon? 
Something like that. Something like that? Something like that. I think it is. And she's just like yeah. sitting there, and she throws that spear, and it hits the hat of Sophia, and then how wipes her up, and then they like go underwater, and like it's that really intricate spell where they're going through Hal's history, mm. and Hal's just like, the important thing is not to look down, and then doesn't ensure that Sophia doesn't look down, because <laughs> she's just straight up like, like she's looking all around the place. Hal really didn't do a very good job of making sure that she didn't look down. But I think that's my favorite scene because it's so beautiful. Mm. And you it see like the very, star very people pretty. dancing around them, and uh, there's like, we later find out that those are the souls of children, I think. Because Calcifer is one of those. But we'll get into that as well. We'll get into that. We'll let Gary get into that because yeah. Gary's curious about it. Wants to talk it out. I feel like if you talk it out, you can figure it out. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. So um, on, those, uh, on those lines, what is your least favorite scene in the movie? Least favorite scene. The ending is so bizarre. <laughs> the prince returns, which I remember them mentioning that the prince was missing. Mm -hmm. Why does he look exactly like Cal? <laughs> And also, he was a scarecrow, and right. when, when he comes back to life, he has a stick there, and he's standing on the stick, and he's holding it, you know, the scene. Mm. And someone's just like, oh, no, no, I think it's the Witch of the Waste, who's just like, that's the love of your life right there, kissing on Hal. And he's like, oh, very well then. And then he just jumps away, and it's like, <laughs> wait a second. Only a kiss from the love of your life can break your curse. You got kissed by Sophia because she was grateful to Turnip Head. Mm -hmm. Then you turn into the prince mm -hmm. and see the love of your life kissing on Hal. And you're just like, ha, pip, pip, cheerio. And then you <laughs> jump away. It's like, well, well I'm glad that the curse is broken. I guess that's reason enough to be happy. But the love of your life is kissing on someone that looks mysteriously just like you. But with black hair. Are they twins? What's happening? What if they're like the same person? Are they? Maybe. How is a wizard? I don't know. I didn't like it. It made me upset. Cause I was like, bro. How is a wizard? So that's where oh. very well in the realm of possibility. Possible. You think that's why she still has the gray hair? Cause it seemed like when she was with Hal, she would turn, but not fully. But then if she were with the prince, mm. the actual love of her life, mm. then it would have fully broken the curse. Mm. But Hal was close enough, because mm. they looked the same, mm. to be like, ah, it's like half broken. Do you know what the thing is? No. No? It's like half broken. I'm, so I'm, she's still I'm bouncing got the ideas hair. off of you here. She's still got the silver mm. hair. Mm -hmm. It's only half broken. Mm. If she were with the prince, it'd be full broken. Because mm. his spell was full broken as soon as he got a smooch. A smooch from Lady Sophia. And I wonder if she would have smooched him after the curse had been broken, his, her truest love, then... So you think that this Howl is not her truest love? You think Turnip Head Howl? Yeah, That's I think Turnip Head Howl, right? Turnip Head Prince. Uh, I don't know if he's named. I'm not sure. Confusing, right? The ending of the movie just makes, like, very little sense. Maybe on a rewatch it'd make more. Mm. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe if we like watch it slower, I guess. Yeah, and Turnip Head was the one that was like, "Go to how, bro? You're literally like letting your girl letting your girl <laughs> go with someone else, like dog. Like you're the you're the true love. You kind of know that, and you're just like dog. You know what? How's a G? I'll let him handle that. The love of your life. Hello, sir, sir, sir. Sir. Oh boy. Anyway. Anyway. Okay, who's your favorite character? The Witch of the Waste. When, especially when she goes senile, she's like, that's such a pretty fire. And she's just like completely taken from her position of like, kind of a really foreboding character mm. and a really foreboding presence on screen. So just like, ah, what a pretty fire. Oh, and then she's just smoking a cigar and throwing like, those little, the worm to Calcifer, and she's just like, ah. <laughs> you know what I mean? She's just chilling at her actual age. Like, you think she'd be more upset about it, but she just seems like aloof. Yeah. It's just so silly. And then Sophia, like, is like, oh, you're kind of sweet. Like, and then at the end, 
she, when she gives back uh, Hal's heart to Sophia, mm. Sophia's like, oh, you're not that bad. And then she gives her a little smooch on the cheek, and then she's like, ah, oh, thank you. Here you go, Hal. You know what I mean? Mm. Who's your favorite character? Calcifer. Calcifer is Calcifer good. Calcifer for sure. Billy Crystal. Calcifer's always been my favorite character. Like, even before I actually watched the movie, uh, I saw, like, clips of him and stuff. Yeah. And there was, like, this, I don't know, there's just energy surrounding Calcifer. And he's just, every time he's on screen, I'm like, I, yeah. it's calming. It's like everything's going to be all right. I think it's part way because I'm nostalgic for the voice, mm. Billy Crystal, mm. which we can talk about actors mm. now, who plays Mike Wazowski. Mm. And secondarily he because he's comic relief. Yeah. And uh, I usually love the comic silly. relief characters anyway. And it, oh, one of my other favorite scenes is when they finally move the castle mm -hmm. and like move everything around. And Calcifer's in Hal's hands and there's like, whoa, and they do all the magic. That was also dope. Because then you see Calcifer's like true form and he's like, Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Calcifer is, I. I like that Calcifer is actually like or like one of the strongest characters, I guess, in a way. Or like most Yeah. Like cuz he controls the whole ca mm -hmm. castle. Yeah. And I feel like him being all silly and goofy the way he is mixed yeah. with that also makes him probably one of my favorites too. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Calcifer's at least a close second. I do love all the scenes with the witch of the waste. Even when she's a <laughs> villain, it's kind of like, you're, you're cool. And then you're really, really, like, cute old lady. Calcifer is like that, that one, like, anime. That's going to show up on my list. Oh. Calcifer is like that. Um, that, was, that was strange. Calcifer is like that one anime character that's, like, like, is the comic relief, but then you make him angry, and then it's like, he's going to burn the whole place down. Kind of like Aang. Kind of like Aang. Aang. He's all silly and yeah. stuff. And then he goes into Avatar mode. Yeah, kind of like Aang. I know what it's called. I know it's called the Avatar State. Don't. All right, <laughs> stop typing. I just said Avatar mode is a joke. Jeez. I know they're typing. I could hear their <laughs> fingers are clicking away. <laughs> it's actually the Avatar State. And when Korra goes into it. Yeah, all right. Calm down. All right, calm down. It's just a drawing. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um, okay, who's your least favorite character then? Hal kind of gives me creepy vibes. Not gonna lie, Hal kind of gives me creepy vibes. Listen. But also, oh, let me think. Sophia's mother is just annoying. Okay, yeah. Just fair, get, fair, uh, fair, what fair. are you doing? You're, you're marrying some guy, like, no one cares. Also, I do like that I can remember all the names because this seems to be based in like a European set, setting where I can be more familiar with the like naming conventions. Whereas with other Ghibli films, I can't really remember the names super well because they're Japanese naming conventions and I'm not as familiar with those. Mm. So I'm glad that I can remember all the names in this movie. Mm. But I don't remember Sophia's mom's name, that being said. I don't remember her mom's name. She's annoying. Was she at the beginning of the movie? Yeah. Like, it's yeah, like Liz or something? Yeah, she's at the beginning and then again, like the mm, eh, beginning of the end. It's like Liz something was, was... Beats me. Was she the one who said, like, Sophia, you can't just keep making hats all day or something like that? No, that's one of her sisters. Okay, her I sisters. Think. See, that's who I was, that's the Liz person. Liz, I don't know what her name is, but, um, I am glad you broke the ice by saying something about Howell being a little strange. I don't think he's uh. creepy. I didn't give me, he doesn't give me creepy vibes. I do agree with you on, um, her mother, and I don't particularly, I don't particularly, like, like a lot of the characters. I'm more really? neutral towards a lot of the characters, oh. except for Casper, Sophia, and... Merkel. Merkel. I love Merkel. Oh, Merkel. Merkel's, Merkel's so great. cute. Um, but with Howell, my only thing... Okay. That first scene that he's in is kind of creepy. I could see it being like a fantasy for some young girl, like, yeah. uh, growing up, maybe like 12 or 13. Mm -hmm. But like, kind of creepy. Kind of creepy. Maybe we watched this movie at an uh, older age than... As a 12 or 13 year old girl, is when we should watch this movie. I'm sorry, they're just gonna show up on the mic. It's gonna be like. I always do that. I know. Uh, okay. There you go. Um. <laughs> Don't blame me. I'm just the messenger. Is it getting picked up? Maybe you should do it right there, yeah. <laughs> Maybe okay. still a little further okay. away. Um, anyway, he's kind of. 
I think, okay, I think my thing about it is that whenever, I had high expectations for hell. Yeah. What are you doing? What is that? face that you're making wait no i i'll tell you after the show but he reminds me of someone that we know he reminds me of someone that we know i'll tell you after the show though are we thinking of the same person probably <laughs> you're you can't do this with me i can't do this one i can't do that with you I, i'll never understand what you're saying no. anyway uh, I had really 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 high expectations for his character just because everybody was talking about him like before i was like ready to watch the movie, I have, to, I have to mentally prepare to watch a movie like this, or any movie ever. Um, I thought he was gonna be like, can't think quite of a character that he would be like, or that I'd hoped he'd be like, but he wasn't like that at all. And I was mildly disappointed. Mm. Not mildly, I was pretty disappointed. He's, he's beautiful, stunning, gorgeous, but he's kind of a himbo, and he is a crybaby. So he, he literally a calls him that. Baby. He is literally a himbo crybaby. And I don't know why so many gals are obsessed with him. Uh, I, yeah, I could see why. I know a lot of girls who would be obsessed with how. Himbo crybabies. Himbo crybabies. <laughs> like moody, reserved. Yeah, I get reserved and moody, but... You don't get the positive part about being confident as well? What do you mean? Like he's a pretty boy. And when he can't be pretty, he gets all sad and mopey. I would rather like I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of characters that I'd rather him be more like maybe, well what I expected him to be like maybe Batman because Christian Bale does play Batman ah, yeah. later on in his career. <laughs> this was uh, 2004, I think. The Dark the Batman Returns is not until 2006, I believe, and then I believe Dark Knight is in 2008. So this was before Batman. Christian yeah. Bale before Batman. Maybe it wasn't that expensive, like I was saying. Yeah, probably not. Probably not as expensive. Not as expensive as you were thinking, by any mm. means. No, no, definitely not. But he was he in American Psycho before this? That would be weird. They were like, you know who we want to voice Hal? The guy from American <laughs> Psycho. Whoa, <laughs> ca calm down there. <laughs> um, he is kind of. I like Hal. I just don't particularly love good. him, and I had high expectations, which makes him like makes it even worse that I didn't love him. Yeah. Me personally, That's, that's all I gotta say. I like him. Just don't love him. I like there him. are definitely characters yeah. I like less than Hal, but I'm gonna put that there because I have the whole idea behind it and argument behind it. So, all right, we're coming up on. We are. So let's let's talk about these four. These well, what we what we got visuals. Visuals. Beautiful movie. Uh yes, beautiful movie. Very great. Just like Ghibli films are, they're all beautiful. They are. This. One, I think that this is kind of. Over the pretty high up pretty there, high up in, there. In, in the amount of grandiose to it. I think that it's visually very appealing. Um, but I like the, like, s specifically with the moving castle, how complicated and how messy it is. Yeah. I like that a lot. I like yeah. that a lot. And Especially we... with, like, the fields in the back. Sorry, I'm interested. No, you're good. You're good. Just, like, how, like, plain the fields are and, like, all of, like, the, kind of like the backgrounds that you normally see behind um, the castle in like pictures and stuff in like backgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. And then the castle is just like this big lump. Big lump of lard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like the visuals in this movie. I think I like the simpler visuals of Only Yesterday, Only Yesterday mm -hmm. better. I think that style is my, I, I, I like that style way more, yeah. I think. It was the older type, like some of the drawings, like some of the backgrounds aren't completely finished, so it just kind of like fades into white in the back. Mm -hmm. And the lighting is just so perfectly done, so beautifully done. This is like, this is fine. It's but you see, complex. It's with this, this a is lot. so involved. Yeah. And like the shadows are so distinct mm -hmm. right here, and like in his face, facial features, and even like in his wings, the the shadows are like rigid. Yeah. I like that. It just doesn't give the same feeling as like looking at a field and seeing all these soft colors and these shadows kind of grade into another like part of the like scenery you know and like in only yesterday yeah and i feel like another reason for that same thing is is the time only yesterday was 1994 or six i can't really uh, remember which one and so this is 2004 almost 10 years later so yeah. just in general like animation has developed further than this and I feel like back then they were looking for that more minimalistic, like artsy, 
kind of faded type of vibe, and every then here they're painting. just like, yeah. And then here it's more like, yeah, every frame's a painting, but we can make it more detailed and more intricate. I think so. A, a good way that I could look at it is like, only yesterday every frame's a painting, and this every frame's a drawing. Mm. Fair. Yeah. You know? yeah. 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 And the same thing can be said for like Spirit Away. Spirit Away is somewhere in between there. Yeah, I, I, feel like I think that Spirited Away is probably the prettiest movie ever. I think it balances this kind of style. And Only Yesterday. And Only Yesterday yeah. style perfectly. We should talk about Spirited Away on here. We really should. We really should, because I love Spirited Away. I could I could genuinely talk about that far more than I could talk about this. Kiki's Delivery Service also hits oh, that should, same note. Oh, I should note watch that, yeah. As uh, Spirited Away, mm -hmm. with stylistically at least, I feel like. Except without like the magical creatures and stuff, obviously. But like... Style-wise, you could see it slotting in there very nicely. Which Person. we were able to talk about comparisons pretty well. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I would say, God, is only yesterday my favorite Ghibli film that I've seen? And it wasn't even Miyazaki. Was it? Watch Spirited Away and then decide that. I've, sp I've watched Spirited Away. Oh, you have? Mm -hmm. You think it's your favorite? I liked it a lot. I liked it that it was calm. I liked that it was soothing. I liked that, like... You saw two perspectives of the same character as like mm -hmm. a child. I liked all the themes coming together. Spirit Away, I watched it back in high school, so granted, I haven't seen it in a while, but I feel like it was too meandery. It meandered too much in parts. Mm. I don't know, I like the visuals a lot. Time travel, also there's time travel in this movie, like briefly. Wanna talk about the curses for a second before you get into that? Cause yeah. Yeah, I feel how like do, this is going to stress you out. How do curses work? How do curses work? You get work? cursed. You get Same cursed. way magic works. But probably. then love undoes all of them? Or love un only does undoes some of them? Also, Calcifer is not a demon. He's just one of those star kids. Is Howl a demon? Howl is not a demon. Howl is a child who ate one of those star people and then his heart was regurgitated as Calcifer. Calcifer. And them together. Make up. Make up like one being. Because if, if Calcifer dies, then he dies. So does that mean that the castle is also part of Hal's being? No, the castle is definitely mechanical. Calcifer just pilots it like a pilot. So do you think that any fire could pilot the castle? Hmm. No, I think it takes a spirit. Also, how would the castle have even been made? I don't think Calcifer's a demon is what I'm trying to say. I know. Do you think Calcifer's a demon? Um, he said he's no. a demon, though. No. Uh, Although Calcifer identifies heavily with the castle because when Sophia runs a plane into the castle, Calcifer says, she ran a plane into my face. Mm -hmm. I wish we could see the castle from Calcifer's perspective. It, it almost feels like... You know how like a heart like has veins in it? Yeah. That's kind of feels like that's kind of what Calcifer feels like to me. Like like that his like he is the, heart the whole of it. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I know, but like the whole like thing is his heart and the veins are kind of like Calcifer's fire. Yeah. It's just kind of what it feels like to me. Yeah. But I wish we could see it from his perspective. I think he's the soul of a child though. Mm. I think maybe a like angel Would that be a demon or thing? a dead child, like a child who's passed. Because they're all shooting stars. They all fall down. Mm. How gets struck with one. Mm. I don't know. I think let us the, know what you think. I think, yeah, let us know what you think. Who are the star children? Are they yeah. all little calcifers? Do they all have the potential to become little calcifers? Maybe they're not. But they need, like, it needs to be more, like, case by case. Like, they yeah. need a howl. And a calcifer. Yeah, to become mm -hmm. sentient. Did calcifer extinguish his childlike soul and it is put into his heart, which is now calcifer? That makes my brain hurt. That sentence just made my brain hurt. Mm. Mm. We'll find out on the next episode. Not Will really. We? No, I don't <laughs> think so. Well, let us know what you think in the comments. Just discuss it a little bit, just because it's a complex movie, I think. I think I have to watch Spirit Away again. I think I agree with you. Okay. Um, Don't make fun of my drawing, y'all. It's going to be bad. But it's rushed, okay? Why Just is it rushed? Because we have so we much do time. Quickly. Do we? Yeah. I don't know about that. Also, we're the last show on this set. 
This is the last show. The set show. is gonna be so different. I think. That's what I hear. That's what I heard. I'm not actually sure if it's. This is looking more like. <laughs> what is his? Oh, he does have. Nope, those are ears. He doesn't have those. Dang, I can't draw. Oh, I really wish that I was artistically inclined like that. I'm... Never mind. <laughs> this looks so stupid. Okay. I like mine. I'm sure you do, Garrett. Billy Crystal. Ah, Mr. okay, Man. I'm done. Wait, let Connected. me... In one film, the only thing we need is... Who's in between Christian Bale and Billy Crystal? Mm -hmm. You ready? Three, two, oi! Aww. Did you smudge it? I did a little bit. I gave it eight Batmans out of ten Mike Wazowski's. You're so silly. Christian Bale's out of Billy Crystal's. Two favorite actors in this movie. The only ones I really recognized. The voice of right off the bat. I put 8.6 little calcifers out of 10 of Sophie's hats. Aren't I so smart? Aren't I so smart and cool? You are so smart and cool. I know. You're so smart and cool. I'm literally the smartest in the class. Tell her how coolest. smart and cool she is. The smartest in the class. Um, yeah, Today was I, a little bit of a chiller episode, I feel. I feel like we yeah. didn't get very at each other's throats like we usually do. I think we agreed a lot on this movie. Yeah. We gotta do movies that we disagree on. We gotta do, like... Movies that I love and you hate. Actually, we should do a movie that I hate and you love. We're always doing movies that I love and you hate. Okay, okay. I don't think you like Scott Pilgrim that much. I did like it. Scott Pilgrim. We'll find a movie that I love and she hates. And then I'll be at your throat about how good it is. Ice Age. We'll talk about Ice <laughs> I Age. I like Ice Age. <laughs> <laughs> what? Just, just pretend that you hate it. Okay, fine, fine, fine. All right. I can pretend. I can't pretend. Farewell. Anyway. Have a good mm -hmm. couple of weeks, week. Oh yeah, sorry guys. Um, so we won't be putting out episodes for a little bit until no. our lovely home is has been remodeled and fixed up. Much and like in that one scene in Howl's Moving Castle. Much like a lot of scenes since Sophie's cleaning the whole time. Um, but yeah, so we might not be here for the next week, possibly two weeks, maybe more than that. I don't know, I really hope not. Fingers Cross crossed. Your fingers. Cross your fingers um, and toes in the comment section down below. But we love you, and we'll see you later. Wait, wait. Bye. Bye.